my name is Noah Brown and I'll be your host for our first UCC Black History podcast episode. Today we'll be taking a closer look at the history of the Buxton Settlement and its key role in providing a safe haven for newly freed enslaved Africans. So without further ado, let's start this episode. In 1839, a reverend named William King was offered a headmaster job for Matthews Academy of Louisiana College. King was an extremely religious man with immovable moral values that his presbytery highly respected. By 1847, his wife Mary and two children had succumbed to various deadly diseases. Being the only surviving member of his family, King automatically inherited a portion of Mary's father's estate, consisting primarily of slaves. The presbytery was unaware that he was an owner of slaves, but he felt a responsibility to let them know. When he regrettably informed his religious community about his recent inheritance, they were immediately mortified. He was able to reassure his Presbyterian community when he let them know that his only plans were to free these enslaved Africans. As he was developing this plan, he was actually approached by an interested buyer who offered him a total sum of $9,000, which is roughly the equivalent of $300,000 today, which he immediately declined. One of his last affairs in Louisiana was purchasing a young boy named Solomon for a total sum of $150, which is roughly $5,000 today. He did this so that he could be connected to his mother as they ventured north to southern Ontario. By 1848, King and 15 enslaved Africans ventured 2,000 miles until they reached Ohio, where they eventually stayed at the King family farm. At the King family farm, William's brother would teach the group of 15 basic survival skills of the North. They learned how to preserve food, build shelter, and vital agricultural skills. In 1849, King purchased 9,000 acres of land in southwestern Buxton, Ontario. With their new swampish land, King and the surrounding community members began building what would later become a magnet for generations of black Canadians to heal and prosper. According to Fred Landon, the Buxton Settlement was the most crucial attempt made before the Civil War to fund a Negro refugee colony in Canada. By 1856, the population was more than 520 people, and the day school had an enrollment of 150 students. The livestock consisted of 190 cattle and oxen, 40 horses, 38 sheep, and 600 hogs. As the Civil War ended, the free settlers of Buxton who were forcibly removed from their American families suddenly wished to be repatriated. This unexpected loss of several Buxton townspeople destabilized the tight-knit work structure of farmers. With many people leaving to reunite with family in the United States, the farmers who remained struggled greatly to make ends meet. Some landowners subsequently sold their properties to interested buyers and others took out loans from individual lenders with high interest rates. These same lenders were then able to gradually extract Buxton properties from their owners due to channel mortgages. This strategic form of gentrification meant that if Buxton mortgagers could not pay back the impossibly expensive loans by the maturity date, they would forfeit their property to the predatory lenders. This economic phenomenon proved to be a dark moment in the Buxton settlement history. In the early 1870s, the construction of railroads opened up more opportunities for commercial jobs, thus ending an era of Buxton. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the UCC Black History Podcast. In the next episode, we'll take a deeper look into Buxton's annual homecoming event and how it became the most historically relevant tradition in Black Canadian history. See you next week!